On long flights, electronics are everything from a distraction to a necessity. But now the U.S. Department of Homeland Security says if you're flying from certain airports in certain countries, anything larger than a cell phone is a threat. Elevated um, intelligence that we're aware of indicates that terrorist groups continue to target commercial aviation and are aggressive in pursuing um, innovative methods to undertake their attacks. The ban includes any device larger than a smartphone, so laptops, tablets, portable game consoles and cameras must all be placed in checked baggage. They believe that by putting it in checked baggage, it will be subject to a different kind of screening and also the passengers will not have access to it. U.S. officials wouldn't say if there's a specific threat. Instead, they pointed to previous attacks, like this in Somalia last year, where a suspected bomb inside a laptop blew a hole into the side of a plane. Still, the U.S. information was enough to convince British officials to get on board, though their restrictions targeted only six countries, including two the U.S. didn't list. As for Canada... We are looking at the information that has been presented to us. We're going to look at it very carefully and, uh, and have a fulsome discussion amongst uh, our colleagues. It's not the first time electronics have been banned from the cabin. In 2006, after the discovery of a plot to use liquid explosives disguised as soft drinks, British authorities banned all carry-on items except essentials. If you're a business person traveling from one of those countries and you need to have your laptop with you, I think that deserves consideration. If it's a credible threat, then it's something that um, I'm okay with. But some experts say for the ban to be truly effective, more countries need to take part. The problem, of course, is everybody has to buy into this. And once you have one airline not buying into it, uh, going into any one country, then you have a problem. The restrictions must be in place by the end of the week and, for now, are indefinite. As it stands, no U.S. carrier is directly affected, which has led some experts to suggest that this move gives them an advantage over their Middle East competition. Stephen D'Souza, CBC News, New York. So, how many passengers would this restrict? Well, Flight Global, an aviation industry tracker, looked at daily schedules from those countries for the airlines affected. They now have 50 daily flights to the U.S., meaning that as many as 18,000 passengers a day would have to follow these rules.